How many houses of Congress does a bill require to do turn into a law? What? The question is for a bit. We're stopping when there's a point. Can I listen? Bills turn into a law with the consent of both of the houses. So the House of Representatives have to approve it, the Senate will also have to approve it, and it can turn into a law with the President's signature, of course. All right, let's talk about who are the leaders of Congress. In Congress, there is a majority party and a minority party. The majority party is the party who has the most members in any particular house. So for example, how many members are there, there in the Senate? 100. 100, so 100 senators. If 60 of them are Democrats and 40 of them are Republicans, who has majority of the Senate? Democrats. Democrats. So that would be the majority party. So go on and put majority party. How many members of the House of Representatives are there? 435. What would be the majority of the House? What number do you need to get to be the majority party in the House? Divide by, divide by 2, add 1. 218. 218 members, that would, that would get you a majority. Alright, obviously, the other party, would, which would be in this example, the Republicans, with only 40 members in the Senate, would be the what? Minority. The minority party. The minority party. Sometimes there's independence in the Senate and the House of Representatives, but very rarely that does that happen. Usually it's Democrats and Republicans fighting for the majority. Today, who has the majority of the House? The Republicans do have the majority of the Senate. Republicans, Republicans also. Uh, today, during this year, the midterm elections, the Senate can is up for grabs, then the Democrats can actually take the majority in the Senate. Why is that important? Because who can get their agenda, their laws passed through more often? The majority party or the minority party? The majority. The majority party, because they have more what? They have more members. When they're voting on laws, then they, they can usually count their members in to say yes or to say no for the bills they want to pass or the bills that they want to fail. So the majority party has a lot of advantages over the minority party. Um, today, we're not just going to talk about their numerical advantage. They do have an advantage when they're voting yes or no on a bill, but they have other advantages as well when it comes to passing or failing laws, so how likely uh, a law gets passed or failed. Anybody have any questions about majority party and minority party? Today, the minority party in both houses is which party? The Democrats. All right, let's talk about the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives is structured like this. There's a member in the House that they select called the Speaker of the House. He is the most powerful man in Congress. The most powerful man in Congress. He's known as Speaker of the House. Today, it's still this guy right here. Anybody know his name? He's, a, he's the House of Representative member from Wisconsin, Paul Ryan, Speaker Paul Ryan. Below him are the majority leader and the minority leader. I don't know if there's still the majority leader or minority leader. This was back during Obama's administration. Um, the majority leader would lead the majority party members in the House of Representatives. So this guy right here leads which party? Republicans. The Republicans. And Nancy Pelosi over here leads who? The Democrats. Anybody have any questions on that? Be Below them. In Congress. Well, we'll pull that out in a little bit. Below them are the majority and the minority whips. So here's the responsibility of a majority leader and a minority leader. Let's say there's a bill that's being debated on the House of Representatives. Um, let's say the Democrats want this bill to pass. The minority leader's job is to make sure that every Democrat votes what? Votes yes. He wants to keep all the party members in line. As a House of Representative member, can you decide on your own? Can you not follow your party? Yes, you can. You have your own decisions. You can go against your party if you want to. The minority leader's job is to make you go with the party, to keep you in line with the party. The majority leader does the same thing for the Republicans uh, on the other side. If the Republicans want to fail this bill, it's the majority leader's job to get all the Republican members of the House to say what? To vote what? Yes. If he wants it to fail? Oh, no. Does that make sense for everybody? All right. Below them are members of Congress that we call whips because they help the majority leader and minority leader whip up votes. They whip the members in line, basically. They, they keep them with the, with the party. But again, as a member of Congress, 
you have your you can make your own decisions but usually it's wise for you to go with your what party. to go with your party because you're getting pressured by your majority leader and you're getting pressured by the whips to obey the party anybody have a question on that who is more successful when it comes to passing and failing laws majority leader or minority leader why <laughs> because he has more members, right? He has more representatives in a particular house. All right, so let's fill this out. The most powerful man in Congress is the Speaker of the House. He is selected by the majority party. Every two years, the majority party have a vote. They usually keep the guy in power. But the majority party selects who's going to become the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House has many powers. Uh, whenever they're debating a bill in the House of Representatives, he's like the moderator. He presides over debates in the House floor. He presides over debates on the House floor. So when the House is in session and they're debating whether or not to pass or fail a bill, he's the guy that controls the conversation most of the time. He also has another power, and we'll talk about what this, these are in a little bit, but he can assign, um, he has influence on where members are assigned to which committees, congressional committees, and we'll talk about what congressional committees are in a little bit, but go ahead and put committees over here. He influences which members of Congress are going to be assigned to which congressional committee. If you want to be assigned to a good one, you better suck up to the Speaker of the House because he has a lot of influence on where you're going to get assigned. And we'll talk about what the committees are in a little bit. Here's another powerful, powerful thing that he can do. He assigns bills to committees. And we'll talk about what that entails in a little bit. He assigns bills to committees. All right, let's fill this in for the majority leader. He leads the majority party and is responsible for keeping party members in line with the party agenda. In line with the party agenda so that they can vote the way the party wants them to vote. They are responsible for gathering votes to pass or fail laws, legislation. They are responsible for getting the votes that they need to either pass a bill or fail a bill in the House of Representatives. All right, minority leader, same as the majority leader, but for which party? For the minority party. They have the same responsibility, only he's for the minority party. So same, same as the majority leader, but for the minority party. The House majority and minority whips help the majority leader or minority leader gather what? The votes that they need, votes that they need to either pass or fail a particular law. And if you've seen um, House of Cards, oh. the main character um, wants to be president of the United States. He's very corrupt. He's like super evil. Uh, but if you like rooting for a bad guy, it's, it's a great show to watch. I would like assign it, but there's like nudity. Kevin Spacey. All right. He starts out as a minority whip in the House of Representatives, one of the leaders of the House of Representatives, and he works his way up to the presidency. Interesting. It's political, there's nudity, there's something for everybody. <laughs> recommend it. All right, let's go to the Senate. Um, the Senate is structured pretty much the same way, but they don't have a Speaker of the House that leads the conversation. Uh, according to the Constitution, the Vice President of the United States, which at the time that I made these notes is Joe Biden, now it's not Joe Biden. Who's the vice president now? Pence. Mike Pence. Pence. Mike Pence is um, the vice presidency is special in that they are the only person that is a part of two branches. The vice president is obviously a part of which branch? Executive. Executive. Because why? Because he's next in line to who? President. The presidency. But he's also a part of the legislative branch a little bit. According to the Constitution, the President of the Senate will always be the Vice President. He will be the one in charge of controlling the conversation. He doesn't have a lot of power, though. He can't vote on legislation. He's just there, usually sitting and watching people talk. Um, there is one situation in which the Vice President 
has some say on whether or not a, a policy gets passed in the Senate or a policy fails in the Senate. Can anybody think of a situation where we need the vice president? When it's a tie. When it's a tie, because what's so special about 100 senators? It's a what kind of number? Even. It's an even number. So what can happen in some circumstances? We can have a tie, 50 yeses and 50 noes. And when that happens, according to the Constitution, the president of the Senate, which is the vice president of the United States, can break that tie. It doesn't usually happen, so he doesn't show up usually. Um, usually his job is, for, is taken up by another senator. He's called the president pro temp, temporary president, basically. But again, yes, yeah, yeah, he does have the ability to break ties, which doesn't happen. The president, well, what you should know about the vice presidency, guys, it doesn't carry a lot of weight. It doesn't have a lot of power. The vice president's main job is to wait for better opportunities, which is usually a president dying. They typically have little influence, but they can break ties in the Senate if a need arises to break ties. All right. Below him are the Senate Majority Leader and the Senate Minority Leader. I believe these are still the Majority and Minority Leaders. Anybody know who this guy is from Nevada? Uh, Senator from Nevada? And it was Harry Reid, Senator from Nevada. He used to be the Majority Leader when the Democrats were in charge, um, but when the Democrats lost the majority, he was relegated to Minority Leader. <coughs> this guy right here, anybody know his name? You need to know his name. He's the most powerful man in the Senate. He usually ha he has the most power in the Senate because he controls the majority party in the Senate. Anybody know his name? Uh, you're never going to forget him because he looks like Franklin the Turtle. His name is um, Senator Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. He has a lot of power because he is the Senate Majority Leader. So, the Senate Majority Leader leads the majority party and is responsible for keeping party members wet. In line, they are responsible for gathering votes to pass or fail legislation. It's the same thing. Senate Minority Leader does the same job, only for the minority party. For the minority party. Harry Reid does it for the Democrats. Alright, Senate and major Senate Majority and Minority Whips helps the Majority Leader or Minority Leader gather votes. They also have whips in the Senate that whip up votes. Anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. So the, the House of Representatives and Senators have 100 votes. I'm sorry, the House? The House of Representatives? Has 435 members. Oh. Yeah. All right, let's talk about what committees are. Congressional committees are the most important thing that we're going to talk about today. You need to know what they are, the, the responsibility that they have in Congress. There's a problem in Congress, and the problem is Congress has to um, decide whether or not to pass or fail laws that could be about anything. It could be about the internet, it could be about the military, it could be about space, it could be about the economy. If you're a Senator or House of Representative member, are you, what are the likelihood that you are knowledgeable about everything? That you can make correct decisions about everything? It's very low. I may be an expert in farming as a House of Representative member because I was a former farmer maybe, but I may not be an expert in the military. But I'm still expected to vote on bills about the military also. So committees fix that problem. Before we even go for a vote in the Senate floor or the House floor, before they even discuss a bill, a bill is assigned to a particular committee. A committee is made up of members of Congress that have specialty or expertise in a particular area. So I'm going to show you a particular, uh, some of the committees that exist in the House of Representatives. So let's say you're a House of Representative member and you're a former farmer. Where would, what, which committee would they probably put you in? They put you in the Agricultural Committee because you have that expertise about agriculture. If you like science, if you're a former engineer, for example, where would they probably put you? The Science Committee, the House Science Committee over here. If you're a former businessman, maybe they'll put you in the Small Business Committee. It's to take advantage of the expertise that some of the members of Congress have. Um, so here's how passing a bill usually works. I need you to follow along. Once a bill is introduced, it doesn't get debated 
by the House floor, by all 435 members right away, it doesn't get debated by 100 senators right away, it's given to a what? It's given to a committee. So let's say a bill about farming is introduced. It doesn't go directly to the House of Representatives. Where does it go first? Which committee would they probably serve? The Agricultural Committee. Does that make sense for everybody? And then if the Agricultural Committee likes it, then they will release it to the House floor and the entire House of Representatives can go ahead and look at it, debate it, and, and decide whether or not they're going to pass it or fail it. But it goes to who first? It goes to the committee first. The committee with the expertise, hopefully, in that particular area. Anybody have a question on that? Let's say this bill is about um, science. Where would it go? Science. science committee. And then the science committee will discuss it. They'll bring in experts to talk, to talk about the bill. And then they will discuss the merits and the disadvantage of passing the bill. If they like the bill, if the majority of them likes the bill, it gets released to the House floor. If they don't like it, what happens to the bill? The bill will die. And what you should know in the United States, this is where most bills die. 80% of all bills that get introduced to the House or to the Senate don't even make it to the House floor or to the Senate floor. They get killed off in committee before they even get voted on in the House floor and the Senate floor. Does that make sense for everybody? If you have a question, please let me know. All right. Go ahead and fill this out. <coughs> Members of, of Congress have different expertise. To take advantage of this, committees made of congressmen with similar expertise are formed in Congress. Just put expertise for both. So if you're good with science, they put you in a science committee. If you're good with agriculture, they put you in an agricultural committee. Anybody have any questions? Hi, right, those of you that are paying attention to details. In the House of Representatives, who is responsible for signing a bill to a committee? Uh, the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House looks at the bill, reads it, and then he's responsible for signing it to the appropriate committee um, that would talk about the bill. Anybody have any questions on that? Moving on. Talk about the standing committees. Oh, by the way, that power the speaker has to assign a bill to a committee is very powerful because depending on which committee that he assigned it to, it can affect the likelihood of that bill passing or failing. So let's say I was speaker of the house and I was given a bill to assign to a committee and I hate this bill, I want it to die. What do I do? I should assign it to a committee that's most likely going to what? Going to fail it. If I like the bill, I assign it to a committee that's most likely going to pass it. Or I can assign it to multiple committees because it only takes how many committees to like the bill for it to be on the House floor? Or it only takes one. So if I hate the bill, I assign it to one committee that's most likely going to kill it right away. If I like the bill, I assign it to multiple ones so that it has a better likelihood of getting through committee and going to the House floor for debate. That's how powerful the speaker is when it comes to passing or failing this. All right, moving on. There's four different types of committees that you need to know about. The most common of which, and this is the one you need to put a star on, because whenever they're talking about committees in your tests, they usually mean this, the standing committees. Standing means permanent. Standing means permanent. These are permanent committees in the House of Representatives. Don't you guys have this? Yeah, but you think there's four sections. I skipped the entire section. All right, what do committees do? They conduct hearings for proposed legislation. Hearings. When the bill is assigned to them, they call it up for a hearing, and they talk about the bill. They talk about the advantages and the disadvantages of passing that bill. Who do they bring in to testify for or against a bill? Experts. They would bring in experts to talk about the merits or the disadvantages of a bill. In a little bit, I'll show you a committee hearing that are talking about climate change. So which expert would they probably bring in to talk about climate change? 
scientists, right? Scientists would be probably a good one. If, uh, for example, I'm talking about gun control, who would be somebody that you would want to bring into a committee hearing to see his opinions about the bill? <coughs> the NRA, lobbyists from the NRA. Um, lobbyists for people that want gun control can also testify and make their case whether or not they want the bill to pass or whether they want the bill to fail. It's all about discussing the merits and the disadvantages of a bill. Um, they debate legislation under consideration. The committee can release a bill to the House or to the Senate floor with a simple majority. A simple majority is what it takes for a bill to get out of committee. If a bill, unfortunately, does not get that majority that it needs, what happens to it? It will die. A committee can also kill a bill early in the process. A committee can kill a bill. And most bills die early on. They don't even make it for debate. All right, let's talk about the four types of committees. Whenever they're talking about committees, standing committees is what they usually talk about. These are permanent committees that are in charge of a certain policy area. Permanent committees that are in charge of a certain policy area. On your notes, you can see the current standing committees that exist in both houses. Actually, there's more than this. I think in the house right now, there's 20. I don't know if you can count it but there's 20 standing committees that exist in the House of Representatives today. And these are permanent committees, they're there, and they're in charge of a certain policy area. So let's say uh, I was a bill, and I was a bill about schools. In the House of Representatives, where would that bill get assigned to? Where would that bill get assigned to? Which committee would it get assigned to? It would get assigned to the Education Committee. Does that make sense for people? Before a bill gets discussed by the entire House or Senate, it needs to go through one of the standing committees in Congress. Most of the work of creating legislation gets done here. Most of the work of creating legislation gets done here. Anybody have any questions? Yes, the charge of a certain policy area? Policy area. All right, moving on. Another type of committee is a select committee. These ones are temporary. They are temporary committees. They pop up when we need them to pop up, and after their job is done, then we disband them. They go away. They disappear. So examples of this would be when Hillary Clinton was getting investigated for Benghazi. A committee in the House of Representatives, a select committee, was formed and to investigate, to question her whether or not she was responsible for the disaster in Benghazi. After they were done with the questioning, what happens to the committee? It disappears. Over here is the Watergate committee. They are in charge of investigating whether or not Nixon actually did something wrong. After the investigation was finished, do we still have the Watergate committee today? No, we don't, because it's select committees are temporary. After the job is done, they're gone, they disappear. All right, joint committees. Joint committees are special in that they are composed of members from both houses. They are composed of members from both houses. They are composed of members from both houses. If you look over here, guys, standing committees are exclusive to their house. Like the House Rules Committee belongs to the House of Representatives. It doesn't exist in the Senate. <coughs> However, for joint committees, they have members from the Senate and they also have members from the House of Representatives. They usually deal with areas that are very important that we feel the need to get both um, houses to be a part of these committees. Like, for example, um, Library of Congress, printing what? Joint Committee on Printing what? Money. Money. Joint Committee on Taxation. So they usually are very important policy areas that require the expertise of both houses. All right, let's talk about important committees that exist today. You need to know these because these are going to be an AP exam. First one is the Ways, the House Ways and Means Committee. 
House Ways and Means Committee. These, this committee is only exclusive to the House of Representatives. Only exclusive to the House of Representatives. There is no Ways and Means Committee in the Senate. Anybody know what the House of Ways and Means Committee is in charge of? They're in charge of tax bills that are introduced. Tax bills. Whenever there's someone that tries to propose a new tax, that bill will go to the House Ways and Means Committee first before the House of Representatives talks about the bill. Why? Why does this particular committee only exist in the House of Representatives? Why doesn't it exist in the Senate? They represent the people. From what we learned from yesterday, how come the Senate doesn't have a Ways and Means Committee that deals with tax bills for them? Because it's for the elite. Uh, uh, that's not, uh, that's not the Because tax bills can only be introduced in which house? In the House. They can only be introduced in the House of Representatives. So it doesn't make sense to have a Ways and Means Committee in the Senate. It makes sense to have it in the House. So whenever a tax bill gets introduced to the House, they get first crack at it. If they like it, they let it get debated on the House floor. If they don't like a new tax bill, they can kill it right away. All right. They review tax bills to try to figure out the consequences of a tax on the economy. Who's it gonna get? Who's gonna get affected by the new tax? How much money are we gonna get from it? Those are all the responsibilities of the Ways and Means Committee. All right. Next, the Budget Committee. Every year, Congress together with the president, have to work together to pass a budget. A budget is the amount of money the federal government is going to need for that particular year. Um, the president proposes a budget. The president says, this is how much we need in the federal government for this year. Let's say it's $3 trillion. We need $3 trillion this year. And before it gets debated on the House floor, it goes to which committee first? What are we talking about right now? Budget. Before it gets to the House of Representatives, it goes to the Budget Committee first. The Budget Committee then reviews the President's budget, tinkers with it, changes it a little bit. Um, they review the President's proposed budget. They review the President's proposed budget. So they take the President's budget, review it, they're going to change and tweak some of it, and then that's the budget that's going to be proposed on the House floor. So it decides the budget for the government that the House will vote on. Will vote on. So, pay attention so you don't get confused. Every year, the President of the United States comes up with the amount of money that he feels the federal government needs to function for that next year. Right? So he has a proposed budget. Where does that budget go next? It goes to the Budget Committee. The Budget Committee talks about it, they can amend the budget, but once they're done with it, where does it go? It goes to the House of Representatives, and the House of Representatives will then decide whether or not they want to approve it or they want to fail the budget. Anybody know what happens if Congress and the President can't agree on a budget on time? The government shuts down which means a lot of the programs and the agencies of the federal government are unfunded for a certain period of time. Didn't you just have to? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if it actually happened. Okay. Yeah. I know there's a big one oh, in 20, 2013, and it was caused by your senator, Ted Cruz, that shuts the government down. All right, number three, the Appropriations Committee. The Appropriations Committee, once the budget is done, let's say they approve $3 trillion, it is the responsibility of the Appropriations Committee to allocate, distribute that money to the different programs and the different agencies of the federal government. So the Appropriations Committee's job is, you know what, $2 million of that $3 trillion is going to go to the military, $5 million is going to go to Social Security, $2 million is going to go to FDA. So they allocate, they distribute funds for the different programs and agencies uh, for the federal government. So let's go ahead and put this down. They influence the allocation or distribution of funds to the different programs and agencies of the federal government. How much money is a program and agency going to get? That's the answer 
that's the um, question that they need to answer in the Appropriations Committee. How much money do we give to the military? How much money do we give to Social Security? That's the responsibility of the Appropriations Committee. By the way, this doesn't only exist in the House, they also have a Senate Appropriations Committee. So go ahead and put here, these are, these are Appropriations Committees. These Appropriations Committees exist in both houses. There are Appropriations Committee in both houses. I don't think the House of Representatives, but in the Senate as well. All right. The most powerful, and you do not forget this one, because it's always going to be your AP exam, is the House Rules Committee. This is the most powerful committee in the House of Representatives. This is their job. I need you to pay attention very carefully because we're going to talk about this more. Once a bill is introduced in the House of Representatives, it gets assigned to a what? Committee. committee. Who's responsible for assigning bills to a committee again? Uh, speaker. The speaker of the House is responsible for assigning bills to a committee. If a committee doesn't like the bill, if it doesn't get majority vote, what happens to the bill? The bill. It will die. But if they like the bill, it gets released to where? To the House floor, but not yet. There's actually a middle step. Once a committee releases a bill to the House floor, it doesn't go to the House floor right away. It goes to who? The House, the House Rules Committee. What did I tell you yesterday? Which House needs more rules and needs more procedures? Yeah. The House of Representatives. Because there's, there's what? There's more people that, that are practicing um, legislation in the, House, in the House of Representatives. These are the people that makes those rules. They create rules for debate. So before a bill gets debated on the House floor, they have to, do, they have to make rules on how that bill is going to be debated. Like what kind of rules? In the House of Representatives, they need structure when they're talking about a particular bill. What kind of rules can they assign? You don't want to you don't want the debate to take forever, right? So a House Rules Committee can assign what? Time. How much time can the bill be debated on? What else can they do? On the House floor, bills can be amended, they can be tweaked, and they can be changed. The House Rules Committee can decide what kind of amendments, what kind of changes can be made on a particular bill. So two things you need to remember. House Rules Committee can decide how much time a bill gets debated, and the House Rules Committee can decide what kind of amendments, what kind of changes can be made on the bill once it's being debated on the House floor. Why is that important? I need you to wake up, some of you are somewhere else. Why is that important? Whoever controls the House Rules Committee, which is usually whose party? Majority. The majority party. Whichever, whoever controls the majority party can make it likely or less likely for a bill to pass by what kind of um, rules they assign to that particular bill. So let's say I was the House Rules Committee and I hate this bill. I have to release it to the House floor. I have no choice. But I can make rules for debate. What kind of debate rules will I give this particular bill so that it's less likely to pass? 